Good morning, four Dorchester High School seniors. I'm Mr. Dashinger, and I'm in charge of this year's very unique graduation ceremony. I'm getting ready to tell you all some stuff that's extremely important. This event is unlike any other event you've ever been to at Fort Dorchester High School, and this year, even though we're having it under these circumstances, is no exception. So pay careful attention to what I'm telling you. My email address will be available on this video. You can email me specific questions. We will also put this information on the website and other social media soon. But for right now, pay very careful attention to what I'm getting ready to tell y'all. Number one, timeliness is of the essence. Graduation for the audience starts at 7.30 a.m. on June the 9th, but you're the performer, so you actually have to be here dressed and ready at 6.15 a.m. You're welcome to get into the parking lot earlier than that, but y'all have to be here at 6.15 a.m. Ask around and find out what happens to kids who don't show up on time. That's not a rumor. So, let's get into it. I'm going to go over your dress, behavior, and other procedures on the day of graduation, so listen very carefully. Number one, you have to arrive at Fort Dorchester High School on June the 3rd, that is the Wednesday prior to graduation, to pick up your vehicle parking pass. Without a vehicle parking pass, no car can come into the school's parking lot. You will also be given two passes for your relatives to come to graduation on that day. If you don't come pick them up on that day, then you will not be able to participate in our school's graduation. We're sorry, but we cannot extend this indefinitely. So there will be one day. Nobody can pick these items up for you. You've got to pick them up. More information on that will be forthcoming. Additionally, don't forget your caps and gowns. One year, a couple of kids forgot their caps and gowns. They left them in somebody else's car. Y'all, if you don't have your cap and gown, you cannot participate in graduation. If you've not picked up your cap and gown yet, we don't have them. You need to contact Jostens up front. Contact them. Um, their website will put up on this video later, but it's www.lowcountrygrad.com. You'll have to contact them if you haven't picked it up yet. So here's what you need to know. On the day of graduation, June the 9th, you're going to need to wake up early and you're going to need to get ready early. And we advise that you have your relatives drop you off or that you carpool with other students into the school's parking lot. I recommend students every year to wear their cap and gown out the door. That way you're sure that you're not going to forget it. So when you're driving out to the school, we're going to have you all get dropped off in the old senior parking lot, the bus lot, and you're going to then walk down along the culinary building and you're going to check in down at the track. When you get to the track, you'll be given a copy of where you're supposed to stand if you haven't already picked one up on June the 3rd when you came to get your park and pass in the first place. So that is where we will check for dress code. So let's go over dress code real quick. We are asking you to dress appropriately for graduation. That means no flip-flops. That means no raggedy shoes. That means no raggedy pants. We're asking that you wear a collared dress shirt if you're a male and that you wear dress pants if you're a male, and that you wear dress shoes if you're a male. Females, you have a little bit more uh, levity there. You can go with a blouse or a skirt or other pants as long as they comply with the male dress code. Females, we do have to ask one favor of you though. Don't wear high heels. No matter how sexy they look in the mirror or in the store, they will not look good when you fall while you're walking on the football field. If you fall down on the football field during graduation, you will end up on YouTube before they call the last person's name. So don't wear high heels, save them for the party afterwards. You will also be given masks when you check in for graduation, and those masks must be worn during the ceremony. Please keep your masks on. And while we're talking about masks, you're going to have to stand farther apart from your friends. You're going to want to get close to them. We know that y'all haven't been together, but when it comes right down to it, we're having this graduation under a very unique situation, and we've got to maintain proper social distancing. We don't want to send y'all off to the world of work, to the military, or to college, or back home with your grandparents having tested positive for the coronavirus. So please leave your masks on, okay? Next thing that y'all need to know, is that uh, you will be looking at, very briefly on this video, a diagram of where you're going to line up. 
This diagram that I'm getting ready to show you is going to tell you where you're supposed to stand in general and what the general layout of the day is going to be. So the video ought to be up by now. What you'll see is that you're going to check in down at the uh, track and then you're going to line up in between the tennis courts and the softball field. So your teachers that are your row escorts, your faculty escorts, they'll be there ahead of you. You'll have been given a piece of paper that tells you who your line leader, who your faculty escorts are. And you're going to find those folks and you're going to stand in the order that they tell you. And you're going to stay there. It's the greatest thing in the world to be graduating and to get your picture taken with everybody. But again, y'all, we have got to maintain social distancing. So stand in your spot and don't move from there. So this is about 6.15 in the morning. You're there, you're lined up, you have found where you're supposed to be. Um, you'll notice that there are gonna be two rows. One of them is row A and one is gonna be row B. And on the diagram, you'll see two sets of lines uh, that go into the stadium. Those lines are for row A and row B. If you're on row A, you're going to follow a Junior Marshall, which is gonna be one of the kids in white gowns or also one of your teachers. They're gonna take you up along the uh, home side of the rows and then you're they're going to tell you which rows to sit in if you're in row b you're just going to follow a different junior marshal or a different faculty escort and they're going to take you down about midway and then you'll find your seats there all that happens now real simply is everybody's cheering for you because it's your day man this is the day that you've been talking about since you started here and so your parents are up there yelling for you. Everybody's happy. It's going to be live streamed or at least streamed at some point in time for your other family to see. And so wave to the crowd, wave to people, but stay seated, keep your masks on. At a certain point in time, the student body president is going to tell all the young men to remove their caps for the national anthem. Remove your caps for the national anthem. And then the national anthem will be played over the loudspeakers and then everybody will be asked to sit. It's important that you all sit together when asked to do so. Mr. Aldridge is going to make a few remarks. There's going to be a couple of speeches from a couple of other kids, and then they're going to start calling you all across the stage to come and get your diplomas. Um, as you get up, you're going to get up from the seats, and you're going to move towards the visitor's side. You should recall that from the diagram. You're going to move towards the visitor's side and then move up towards the big jumbotron. That's the side where you're going to go up to the stage going to go across the stage and you're going to get your diploma cover from Mr. Aldridge. As you walk across the stage, at this point in time, you'll see a photographer from Life Touch down there. They'll take a much better picture than your parents' phone is going to take from the upper, de upper, upper rows of the, of the stadium and then proceed back to your chair. And then stay standing until your whole row returns and then your whole row will sit down together. We'll go through all of the names that are there for graduation on that day. Mr. Pye and Mr. Aldridge will confirm the graduates. They will ask you to turn your tassels. You will be asked to sing the school's alma mater, which will be conveniently printed for you on the front of the program that you'll be given, in case you've forgotten the words. So, at this point in time, the junior marshals and the faculty escort that walked y'all in are going to walk y'all out. But you're not going to go out the same way you came in. If you remember that diagram, the map that we showed you earlier, you're not actually going to go back out through the tennis courts and the softball field. Instead, at this point in time, you'll follow those red lines and the junior marshals will escort y'all all the way off of the field, through the main gates, and out into the senior parking lot. Y'all, it's at this point in time that I ask people every year to look back at the school, because this is your last day as a Fort Dorchester High School student. You've had some fond memories here, maybe you've had some bad memories here, but at this point in time, you look back, and this is your alma mater. This is the school that you went to for the previous years. We thank you for all the things that you came in here and did, and we hope that you thank many of us for the wonderful things that we did as well, but we want you to take a special time here to thank your parents and your family members that have not been able to come to graduation. Thank them for being supportive of you, and uh, have a great, great, great day celebrating, and don't do stupid things. We want our graduates to go on and do great things. Thank you.